Live coverage continues here of Israel at war, and we've been watching the uh, situation um, in Gaza as it develops overnight. The airstrikes from Israel have been coming, and they've been coming fast and furious. We heard moments ago from the Israeli Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Live pictures now uh, from Gaza. You see uh, the burning structure there in the background, and these are the types of photos that, and videos that have been coming into us here for the last number of hours, and presumably will continue to come in as the night continues to unfold. Mick Mulvaney joins us now, a News Nation contributor, a former a director of the Office of Management and Budget, former White House Chief of Staff. And, um, you know, we were talking right before. There's a couple of things. I want to ask you a little bit about what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said moments ago. But just to continue a conversation we were having with Joe Khalil on Capitol Hill, what would you say about the United States not having a, you know, a functioning House of Representatives with all of this going on and how big of it, how, you know, put it in perspective, how big of a deal is that? We don't want to make it too much if it's not, in your view. Yeah, it is and it isn't. It's a big deal from a PR perspective. It looks really bad for us yep. to sort of be in this state of dysfunction. It doesn't really impact our government's ability to do anything for the, at least the next couple of weeks. Here's how it works. Right now, the things that we would be doing as a government would be things that are already authorized under law. You've seen the Pentagon moving assets. You've seen the Pentagon talking about sending weapons. We've already, you know, share information with Israel. We share personnel with, with, with Israel. That's all under existing law, and you wouldn't need Congress to do any of that. In fact, you don't need Congress to do any of that. If this drags out, Colin, and you talk about having to do what we call supplemental appropriations, extra spending, or going above and beyond to do extra authority, that would take Congress uh, to sort of to, to, to approve, which would take legislation, which they cannot do if they don't have a speaker. Right. So while overseas people don't understand how our system works, and that could lead to sort of uh, confusion and chaos, and I get all of that, and that's a real thing in the world of international politics. But in a very practical uh, uh, meaning, there's no real impact right now in our ability to, to act as a government, and there won't be for a couple of weeks at least. Fair enough. So it's a time frame issue, and you know who knows how long this is going to drag on, but it's something we'll watch down the line. I want to ask you a little bit about the uh, Israeli response to the Hamas attack. The, the response is now fully underway. The defense minister talked about a complete siege earlier, talked about cutting off electricity, food, water, fuel, and everything else. And then moments ago, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, spoke. He said a couple of things that stood out. First of all, he said, what happens in the next few days will affect us for generations. And then the second thing he did address, it appeared at least on the periphery, some of the intelligence questions, because there have been there have been some reports out there that, well, maybe he was tipped off by this, uh, by another intelligence agency he says, if, I, if we knew about this, if the intelligence community told me about this, it wouldn't have happened, is essentially paraphrasing what Netanyahu had to say. So, uh, number one, your thoughts on how Israel is responding and thoughts on the what appears to be a, a large failure of intelligence before all of this happened. Yeah, well, the response is, is completely understandable. I haven't done the math recently because the numbers keep changing, but I think er early this morning when I looked at it on a on a relative comparison between the size of Israel and the size of the United States, it would be the equivalent of 25,000 Americans having been killed in the last 48 hours. That's how big this is. So yeah. it's bigger than Pearl Harbor. It's much bigger than 9-11. This is a really, really big deal. And I don't think anybody could blame the Israelis for taking every particular action that they've taken. We would do at least as much if, and I'm not suggesting this would ever happen, but if Mexico were to do something along the border of Texas, would we sit back and, and do nothing? No, we would be aggressive in defending our nation as they are there. So I, I think that makes complete sense to me in a very sort of global, international, realpolitik kind of approach. Now, as to the intel, Losin, those are questions that are going to have to be asked. We asked those questions of our leadership after 9-11. Um, you know, they are going to ask the questions of the Netanyahu administration at some point in the future. Not now. Not, not, now is not the time for finger pointing and blaming. I know that some folks can't help themselves when it comes to that, um, but that is that is not the priority right now for the Israeli government or even for our government. That will be the question that gets asked in the future. In the future, we will be asking the same thing of, of, of ourselves. Did we know about something? Right. Did we tell the Israelis? Did we not tell the Israelis? The Israeli intelligence services are among the best, if not the best in the world. They're the only people I would put on the same level as the Americans. Um, so if they didn't see it coming, I think folks are going to want to know why. If they did see it coming, they're going to want to know why they didn't do anything about it. Those are fair questions to ask but they're too soon right now. Yeah, to be I mean, the reputation of the Israeli intelligence community is what really raises these questions because, like you say, they're known for this, and that's what surprises people so much. Uh, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.